Another hydrogen explosion at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant today. Eleven workers were hurt, and that is not all. Nuclear officials have been pumping seawater into troubled nuclear reactors, trying to prevent meltdowns. But a sudden drop in the water levels may have caused a partial meltdown today. A steam vent wouldn't open, and that is why the water level dropped, and the uranium fuel rods were exposed. We want to talk to someone who can explain all of this to us. Dr. Timothy Jorgensen is the chair of the Radiation Safety Committee at Georgetown University Medical Center. Doctor, thanks very much for being with us to uh, help shed some light on this so we can better understand it. How much damage is there? What does a partial meltdown actually mean? Okay, so I think the first thing for everyone to understand is these hydrogen explosions that are going on are not nuclear reactions. Some people think that this is the equivalent of a hydrogen bomb. This is not the case. These are chemical explosions due to the buildup of, of hydrogen within the plant. So every time one of these explosions happens, the real danger is that it will compromise the containment vessel. And when that happens, some leakage can come out. Now, um, the, the issue with the meltdown is that um, if the heat can't be contained, the entire core will melt. And when that melts, either uh, most of it will be still be contained within there, or some of it or more of it will escape. And that can get into the environment, usually into the atmosphere, and be dissipated over larger distances. So is it correct to say that part of it has melted? Well, that I have my information is no more than what's in the press, and the press has said okay. that um, there has been a partial meltdown in at least one of the reactors. So, so here's my question then. How can anybody get close enough to, to know the full extent of the damage? Well, there are remote monitoring systems within the plant, and also workers go in there for very short periods of time. So they have, they have personal monitors, and when they get to levels where exposures would be, would be hazardous to them, they're replaced by another crew. Okay. So obviously that can't go on forever, but I think for short periods of time, they can have a pretty good handle on what's going on. And you're talking about the leaks that are potential or that have already happened. Would it be wise at this point to expand that uh, evacuation radius that they already have in place? Well, I understand that um, the evacuation radius is currently 12 miles if they haven't increased it. Um, I think the Japanese are working with an abundance of caution here, and I think that um, I th everything that they seem to have been doing up to this point uh, has, has seemed appropriate, and they seem to be uh, keeping the public informed and, uh, like I said, using an abundance of caution. So I think that um, we'll have to use their judgment that the 12-mile uh, radius is adequate at this Be point. Before I let you go very quickly, what about weather? What, what role does weather play in the impending disaster? If it gets windy, it obviously potentially makes things worse. Weather makes all the difference. So the best scenario, if there was, if there was an emission that will go up in the atmosphere, winds from the west would, would blow all of this out to sea. And in that case, it would it would land harmlessly on the on the ocean. It would be it would be diluted by by the immensity of the ocean and wouldn't harm anybody. The worst case scenario that would be bomb back inland and contaminate the the populations living in Japan. A lot of factors at play here. Dr. Timothy Jorgensen, thanks very much for your expertise. Thank you.